Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Caleb and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at deploying as well as creating a Discord bot. So a Discord bot allows you to interact with a software application that we're going to create through an application known as Discord. And think of this as the interface to working with our application. Just like you would normally work with your application through the terminal or through button clicking, now you can work through it through chatting. And these principles are going to hold true for other chat applications as well. So you could do the same thing in principle for Slack, Telegram, Facebook Messenger, whatever it might be. It's just going to be a little bit different how you do that. And the great thing about this is that this is going to be deployed to a cloud server running 24 seven. And I'm going to show you quickly what you can do with this with a simple example of a discord bot I created. All right, so here I am on discord where I can talk to all my friends. Right now it's just some bots, but let's not talk about that, okay? And what we can do in here is we can go in and ask for a price of any cryptocurrency followed by what ticker we're looking for, and it will return the price, such as Bitcoin. Now the cool part about this is that it's hosted, running 24 seven. I don't have to keep anything running on my local computer. So overall, it's a pretty cool way of working with an application. Pretty much any application you could build, you can build the interface to be Discord messages or some chat message. So you can think of the messages I'm typing in to Discord as the inputs in the terminal, for example. It's just a new way of looking at it. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna talk about the deployment process first. We're going to get the bare minimum set up on a deployed server, and then we can add to it as we go. That way we don't build this entire thing locally and then have a really hard time getting it up somewhere public. So for this, we're going to be using the sponsor of this video, which is Hostinger. So to find Hostinger, you can use our special link, calcur.tech forward slash Hostinger. And this will bring you to the Hostinger webpage. And Hostinger is really good because they have top-notch support and affordable servers. So you can go into Hosting, and then we're going to be using VPS Hosting, Virtual Private Server. And this will allow us to have complete control over our server. So scrolling down, you can see all the different options here. Scrolling down, you can see all of the different features. So we'll start off with VPS2. We'll hit Select. And you can go for 48-month commitment if you want to save the most. But best of all, I actually have an additional coupon code, which you can use Caleb Curry, and that'll give you an additional discount off of your service. So whatever plan or length of time you choose to go with, use the coupon code Caleb Curry, and that'll give you the most percent off of your purchase. So when you're done signing up, you can enter their dashboard and you will have your VPS right here to which you can click manage. And from here, you can have your SSH details as well as a root password. So we'll go in here and set some really secure password. Totally not password. Oh, you got me. All right, we'll save changes. All right, see, they won't even let you put a dumb password. So let's go ahead and make something that's actually secure and we'll save changes. All right, so password has been updated. And what we can do is we can take this command SSH root at this IP address and from the terminal, paste that. Or if you're on Windows, you can use the PuTTY client, which they talk about right here. So when you type that in, you'll put in your password and you'll be connected to the VPS. Simple as that. So what we want to do now is we want to make sure we have software installed to get any code we create locally on this server. So for that, I'm going to be using Git. So when you type in Git, you should get a response like this. However, if you don't, you'll want to use apt-get. So we'll clear and we'll say apt-get, prefix this with sudo, update. That's going to get the latest of all the software packages. And then we can say sudo apt-get, git, prefixed with install there. So sudo apt-get install git. And now you should have git installed and you can see all the different commands. So the process is basically we're going to code locally now, deploy it to git, and then pull those changes onto the server. This is a process that can be automated using CI CD if you want to get into that as well. So what we want to do now is go to the discord developer portal. We'll want to create a discord and a discord account 
you haven't done that already. So I'll show you that process real quickly or where you'll find that. So over on discord.com, you can hit login and then go to register. And this will give you the option to create an account. Once you've created an account inside of Discord, you can go ahead and add a server. So create my own for me and my friends. What are we going to call this? We'll just call it YouTube. Hit create. And now you have your own Discord server. So now we can go to the Discord developer portal. A quick search of Discord developer portal brings this up. And from here, you can go to applications, new application, and give this a name, something like YouTube bot, hit create. And then you'll go to the bot tab on the left, add a bot. Yes, do it. You can read through that if you want, basically saying this isn't reversible. And now you have a bot. So a few privileged things you'll want to do. I'm just going to give as many permissions as we can. These things called intents, which allow your bot to do different things. So we'll go ahead and turn those on and hit save. And then from OAuth2, this is where we're going to actually connect to our bot. So we will want to give this bot permissions. And you can learn about all these other permissions if you want. So for example, if you want to do slash commands, you have to enable applications.commands. But we're just going to be using the bot scope here. So we'll go ahead and take this link, copy that, and paste this in the browser. This is going to invite the bot to our server, which we can go to YouTube and authorize. So we're adding it to our YouTube Discord. So we authorize that bot. And now over in general, we should get a little message. Welcome YouTube bot. Say hi. So that is the step-by-step -step process to actually creating your bot. Now, where is this bot hosted? Well, we don't actually have an application behind this bot doing anything. It's just in existence. The user has been created. So the next step is we're going to start developing locally. And I'll talk about how to create this bot to respond to some commands. So the process to create a Discord bot is going to be following Discord PY. And this is a package that'll make creating a Discord bot very easy. Basically, you just tag a particular function as a bot command, and then this is the actual command, and then what happens in the command. So we're going to be doing this all in Python. I assume some basic Python knowledge. So we'll start with an empty file, and we'll just call this discordbot.py or something like that. And here we go. And we'll just test this out, print hello, make sure that we can run this thing. And there we go. You can see our Python code is running. So what we need to do now is we need to install some stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're going to say pip three install. And I think it's discord py. Nope, discord.py, there we go. So you'll install discord.py and here's how we're going to import that. We're going to say import discord and then one more from discord.ext import commands. And then we're gonna create an instance of a bot by saying commands.bot with a capital B and pass in command underscore prefix equal to exclamation mark. So we're gonna keep a reference to this by assigning it to a variable bot. You also see client here a lot as well. All right, we'll save that so far so good. Running it, making sure there's no issues so far, seems good. And we can create a command by saying at bot dot command parentheses async def hello, and in parentheses, ctx, which is known as the context, and you can get extra information with that. And that's actually all we're gonna need for this colon. And inside of here, what we're gonna do is we're just going to say hello. So to do that, we need to say what channel this bot is going to respond in. So what we need to do is we need to go over to Discord, zoom out a little bit, and in, ch in general, what we can do is we can right click copy ID. Now by default, that copy ID is not gonna show up. So what you need to do is you need to go into user settings, scroll down to advanced, and then developer mode, turn that on. That'll allow you to get the ID of stuff by right clicking and copying IDs. So right click, copy ID, 
and over in our code, what we will do is we will say await bot dot get channel, pass in that number, dot send, and then in this parentheses, we'll just say a message, hello world. The last thing we need to do is we actually need to connect our bot, and to do this, we need some permissions. So let's head over back to the Discord developer portal, and in here, we have this client secret. We can copy that, and we say bot dot run, and in parentheses, we just pass that token in quotes. Lovely. Let's see if this worked. Run our code. Improper token has been passed. I think we actually need to go to the bot tab and then get the token from here. My bad. So we'll paste that here. Save and run again. All right, so at this point, what we should be able to do is go over to Discord and say something. So in general, I'll say hello nothing happens and that's because we prefix our commands with exclamation mark so when I say exclamation mark hello we get a response hello world fabulous at this point we have a discord bot and the most basic command it works and you can build from here you can basically build in logic to respond to different things but this is still running locally not exactly what we want long term so let's talk now about how to get this up in GitHub and pull that down on our remote server. First thing we'll do is we'll open a new tab and go to GitHub, create a new repository, and we'll just call this Discord Bot. And there's a concern that you should have, and that is if you make this public, your bot token is going to be exposed on the internet. And I think Discord might even catch that and change that bot token. So to fix this, you can use environment variables or you can just make the repository private. Definitely easier just to make it private to start with, but if you want to open source this, then you need to go a couple of extra steps. So we'll go ahead, hit private here, create repository. We don't need to check any of this stuff. And then locally in the terminal, we can actually do that from here. We can close out of our bot, control C, clear, and we should be able to say git init to create a git repository and we should be able to say git status to see our files git add discordbot.py git status again to see that it's ready to be committed git commit hyphen m for a message initial commit enter and now what we'll do is we'll go back to github and follow the changes that are suggested so we're going to rename our branch to main by default it's master so git branch hyphen m main and we're going to add this url as a remote so we'll paste that here and then we're going to push our changes paste that here and there we go now you might need to do some logging in or some authentication of sorts but I already did all that. So now when we refresh, we have our discord bot.py right here. Next thing we gotta do is we gotta pull that down on a remote server. So the process is gonna be like this. We change locally, we commit those to GitHub, we pull down those new changes on our server and relaunch our bot. Yeah, it's a bit of a process, but a lot of this could be automated if you want. So what we will do is we will take this web address and on our remote server, we will say git clone paste that it's asking for our username as well as our password so you put your password in here or with two-factor authentication you might need to create an authorization token from github so go ahead and log in and now when we say ls we got discord bot right here so we can cd into discord bot and we should be able to say python 3 discord bot Dot .py and we get no module named discord and pretty much any of the packages we install locally we have to install those on the remote machine as well now you can create a requirements.txt file and then install with hyphen r to copy all the packages from a requirements file but i'm just going to keep it really simple for this video if you want to research how to do that you can but here's what we're going to do so we're going to use pip3 to install discord bot.py however by default it's going to say command not found so we'll just need to say sudo apt get 
install pip. And that's going to install a bunch of stuff. Yes. And now we can say pip3. And we get some response. So we can say pip3 install discord bot dot py. And that'll install. And now we should be able to say Python 3 discord bot dot py. And our bot should be running. So let's head over to Discord. And just to confirm that this isn't running locally, let's open up Visual Studio Code, close out of it. And uh, it looks like it's not running locally. So we should be able to say hello. And there you go. Now there's an important part that you'll need to do because if you close out of your connection, you're pretty much going to shut down your bot. So you can see I exited the bot and it closed the connection and our bot no longer works. So you say exclamation mark hello, nothing. So what we need to do is first reconnect to the server. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some software called a screen. So we're gonna say sudo apt get screen, install screen and that will install screen. Actually, it says screen is already the newest version, so looks like we're good to go on there, but it might be installed for you because I've used this server a little bit already. So we'll clear, and now what we can do is we can say screen, enter, and then from here, what we're gonna do is we're going to change directory into the Discord bot, and then say Python3 Discord bot.py. That's running, and you can hit Control A, Control D, and it'll detach and we can say screen hyphen ls and you can see we have this running in the background so to open that back up we say screen hyphen r 1511 hit enter and it opens up and it's running again control a control d to get back to where we were so now if we exit we lose that connection we should be able to say hello and we still get a response so that is the magic of the screen. I'm sure there's lots of different ways you can do that, but that's what I do. All right, so that was a lot to fit into one video. The intention of this video is to get the bot up there, have the bare bones basics set up. So now you can start building upon this bot and it's deployed. You know how to make those changes and you're good to go. Stay tuned for upcoming videos because we may build upon this to create more bot commands and make it a little bit more interactive. Maybe even look at some CI and CD. Let me know what you'd like to see in the comment section below. And again, special thank you to our sponsor, Hostinger. I'll leave our link to that below as well. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.